here at Sharp Top Mountain to bring you the news from underground. But before I begin, I'd like to talk about the Fight the Matrix discussions that we usually hold every Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Uh, they're soon going to turn into, well, it's, it's evolved now into two different formats. The first one being, uh, it's soon going to be a way for parents to discuss and network and talk about peaceful parenting. And the second one is the evolution of um, this show. <laughs> uh, this is something I find I want to invest more of my time and resource into bringing you, um, I guess, an anarchist, uh, non political, and objective perspective on the state of affairs. And so in order to do that, uh, it's diverse into two different areas now. Um, I'll still answer questions, you know, um, if you have any, if you're interested in like what my viewpoints and thoughts are on a particular subject or topic, you know, you're more than welcome to email me and um, yeah, be happy to answer. And so with that, I'll begin with the news from underground. First local story is from Henrico. Henrico woman, Tonya Farnsworth, pleads guilty to extorting pastor after sex act. A Henrico woman pleaded guilty to extorting more than $100,000 from a Hanover pastor. That's a lot of money. Chris Allen Phillips, a pastor at Mechanicsville Advent Christian Church, responded to an ad on Backpage.com and paid Farnsworth $200 for oral sex in December, according to prosecutors. The following month, she accused him of stealing $550 from her and demanded he repay her or she would release photos of their encounter. Kind of reminds me of um, that movie with uh, Adam Sandler's. The only movie I, I guess Adam Sandler's good at, aside from Happy Gilmore, okay, and uh, it would be uh, Punch Drunk Love. Uh, I guess the only serious role he's taken to take a, a more dramatic role. Um, but now I'm going off on another tangent. Uh, so over the course of the next three months, she repeatedly asked Phillips for more money. Ultimately, she took more than $100,000 from the pastor. Philip eventually went to the police, who caught her in April in Tampa. And then incidentally, of course, it's like, oh, poor Philip. But of course, you know, where did he get the $100,000? He was later arrested for embezzling from his church. So, you know, this is an interesting story because it touches upon uh, several aspects of uh, victimless crimes. You know, the first one being the uh, prostitution area, right? You know, you're going online, you're uh, making a consensual contract. You know, of course, the only reason why she's able to kind of defraud him in a way by extorting him is by, uh, you know, this is an illegal act for the most part. Um, you know, if you were to have consensual contact with an older adult, you know, whatever matter or description that may be, the state says there's only certain kinds of actions or that's permissible according to them. So two adults getting together and, and having fun, uh, it's not permissible if there's an exchange of a uh, commodity called, you know, money or currency, uh, you know, but it's no different than um, the kind of, uh, I guess, playful entertainer you get for a clown or someone who's providing burlesque or someone who's providing performance, you're, you're paying them for that service or paying them for that entertainment or for that uh, way to, you know, bring more fun and joy into your life. Um, you know, of course, as long as it's consensual. But for the most part, you know, because this is a victimless crime, because there's no victim, because it is consensual, uh, it goes and it, it kind of ruins a lot of people's lives. Uh, it's difficult for a lot of people, I guess, in whatever arrangements they have with their own lives, uh, to find, uh, I guess, sexual intimacy with others. And so, you know, this is uh, an area where two consenting adults agree to the circumstances and agree to, I guess, whatever technicalities. You know, a lot of the times it doesn't have to be full sex. A lot of the times it's just maybe uh, just fulfilling some kinks that perhaps have um, no, you know, skin and skin contact. Um, so, you know, so for the most part, a lot of this stuff is, uh, you know, demonized by the state. A lot of this has created a cultural negative outlook on these sort of uh, instances of human interaction to make it look, you know, demonic, e uh, evil, uh, immoral. Uh, you know, and, and again, it's nothing but, uh, you know, opinions from strangers who have no idea what's going on in, in the consensual uh, environment of these two consenting adults. So that's, uh, when you look at that, you know, prostitution, again, it's, you know, it's your body. You can do what you want with your body. You know, it's nobody else's business what you what you do with that. It's no one else's concern with what you do in, in regarding consent, right? Uh, so, of course, you make it illegal, you make it difficult for the pastor to come out and to talk about these, these issues or, you know, try to seek out a friend because they're going to look down on you to begin with because uh, it's illegal. So he doesn't have, uh, so the culture is set against him. It's the, you know, status culture community is kind of set against him uh, from even trying to uh, 
uh, find a uh, remedy to the situation to to to, to solve this problem from being uh, extorted. You know, in the end, he eventually has to go to uh, <laughs> to the agent Smiths to try to solve his problems. Um, and of course, uh, and that's that's why he embezzled from a church. You know, you I guess if you're a pastor at this church, you think that you'd have this connection or. Um, this kind of a camaraderie against other people that you can be open and honest. I mean, even as a pastor, you're asking other people to be open and honest with you in the confession booths, right? But you can't do the same in return. Um, so it's, it's interesting in the ways that how far people will go because it's illegal. Uh, because something's legal or illegal, it doesn't mean it's going to stop from someone from doing it. You know, again, it's just a piece of paper. Uh, it's the cultural attitudes that will change that. It's the uh, setting up real contracts. You know, if you're not... Um, for consenting adults to to have fun whether it be for payment or for a snickers bar you know you don't have to be you can live in a community who are very uh, puritanical and conservative in that nature and that's perfectly fine you know let everyone else have the fun as long as of course they're not forcing that onto you right and that's pretty much what the most we're asking from each other you know just to be have the freedom to be left alone The next story is rubber band upper west side school prohibits popular rainbow loom bracelets this is in New York. A popular new fan has been rubber band. A school on the Upper West Side has banned Rainbow Loom, the colorful make them yourself rubber band bracelets because they're distracting and have led to fights on the playing ground, the principal said. Assistant Principal Susan Federici wrote a letter to parents announcing the ban of the Rainbow Loom bracelets and kits. Any students caught with the offending items must hand them over to their teacher, you know, and then of course the bracelets will be returned to the parents. And uh, the reporters nearby reported that the Rainbow Loom bracelets are the latest trend sweeping the nation's elementary school students. Kids have been bringing their Rainbow Looms to school where they make, trade, and sometimes sell the bracelets to each other. That sounds like, that's, that's good. <laughs> that teaches entrepreneur skills, that teaches um, negotiation skills. That's, these are, that's, I, I guess, far removed from what you'll learn in a public indoctrination system. You know, uh, inevitably they want you to end up working for the government, right? Uh, not to actually teach entrepreneurial skills. You know, instead of uh, you know looking at Sellers Catan as an interesting board game that teaches you that uh, you kind of have to eventually trade, right? Um, instead of looking at like games like Battleship, you know, that doesn't really teach any of that uh, like essential skills that you're going to need in, in adulthood. So the story goes on that. Um, that she used everyone else's, which is part of the reasons why they're fighting uh, in regards to why this parent supports the ban. Uh, she doesn't allow her daughter, Charlotte, to bring her loom to school. She said it became the problem. Uh, Nine-year-old Willa Switzer says she loves the bracelets, but admits they can be tough to focus in class. I don't blame you. A lot of the classes in these public indoctrination schools are really boring, right? Um, and that's not your fault that they're boring. That's the teacher's fault that they're boring. You know, this it's their job to try to find a way to encourage you, to get you interested, to make it worthwhile. Um, and again, you don't have a choice to select the teachers, right? You don't have a choice choice to select the areas or subjects you like to study. So yeah, I don't blame you. You know, um, a lot of my my experience with uh, the public indoctrination system was very similar to that. Just finding a lot of ways to escape and cut class and uh, disappear. And uh, yeah, it was. Uh, Really, it was. It is. It is, it is a prison for for creativity, um, and inhibits and pre prevents. Uh, I guess inward in introspection and uh, different ways to kind of examine things that are outside of the uh, monopolized textbooks, where you're not allowed to think outside. You know, the monopoly on law. You're not allowed to think outside. You know, the the way that they changed history, right? The way that they've uh, influenced to make it seem. You know, of course, like Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. Uh, a lot of nonsense like that. Uh, so, she says, I like making them at home, but sometimes they're distracting at school. Because when kids are playing with them, it just makes me want to watch it. Well, its mother said, there's also the, some, the issue of some kids feeling left out. You also have to be able to play at the playground and not have it be something where one kid has it and another doesn't. Mother said, banning bracelets is ridiculous. It is. They're not dangerous, they're not inappropriate. This mother, Lisa Green, told Hsu, the reporter, are we going to ban everything that distracts children? <laughs> if you do, please just ban, ban uh, public indoctrination schools. Uh, I, will, I would say that you can bring them, but when it's time to work, you just have to put them away. 10-year-old uh, Paloma 
Kluger told her. So you know, she has an interesting sense of uh, responsibility and self-discipline. And of course, the Department of Education said there's no citywide ban on Rainbow Loom, noting it is up to the individual principals, more political rulers, to prohibit items that may be disruptive. Uh, and again, you don't have uh, the freedom of economic choice to decide what kind of school you'll like for your child to go to. Um, you don't have uh, the freedom of economic choice to select the teachers, to select the areas of subjects. Uh, you know, of course, in a, when you have a monopoly on anything, that's why the cost of schools continue to rise and why teachers are continuing having to cheat for their students to help them pass these standardized tests. Um, and that goes again, you know, the quality always continues to depreciate. Uh, and again, you don't you don't have a, a choice to to I guess uh, to see the other kinds of students your child will be interacting with. Um, you know, you're you're throwing them into the pits of uh, statism in that certain area uh, where it's it's a perfect environment where bullies thrive. Um, you know, it's where it's permissible. And and again, it's uh. It's very appropriate. Of course, so you, you teach children how to make their own uh, products, how to trade, how to uh, exchange this voluntarily. You teach them uh, entrepreneur skills. They learn to become independent. Uh, you teach a child to become independent. They no longer have a need, you know, for this indoctrination system. They have no longer need for for government. You know, so again, that's the last thing you want to teach children. So it makes perfect sense. Uh, so should county be allowed to banish criminals? This is in uh, Lunenburg County, Virginia. If you live in rural Lunenburg, you know about its peaceful setting and its historic past. But a new battle is brewing on an old practice, banishing criminals from the county. Lunenburg's chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People recently passed a resolution banning the practice. Quote, Here we have real people, flesh and blood, who can't return home because one person said you can't come back to this county for whatever amount of years he decides. Eileen Mormon, president of the Lunenburg NACP chapter said. So it's interesting because she says you can't come back to this county because of one person, one person deciding. Well, that's what political rulers are, right? So if you can see, uh, I guess, that kind of relationship, that kind of, um, I guess, extremes you have from someone you've never met arbitrarily deciding this for you, uh, you should universalize that principle and that no one should have, the, I guess, the right to force their opinion and their ideas onto you. Right? Who are they to begin with, right? They're, they're nothing but strangers. You, you have no relationships with them. They're not your friends. They're not your, your neighbors. These are complete strangers having this uh, arbitrary uh, idea that they can force their will upon you. Uh, and, not, and of course, the, this goes back to the banishing criminals from the uh, county. That's that could that could be part of the agreement. You know, if you live in a golf course community, and it gets to the point where you know if you do such an act uh, that's against the, the rules, like for the third time, you know, the punishment could be banishment from this community. Um, you know, there could be different ways in that agreement, in that contract that you sign, in terms of uh, agreeing to the consequences. You know, of course, after paying restitution to the offender and, and seeing how it would escalate from there. Uh, so they continue to say, quote, the condition will say, in essence, I agree to stay out of Lunenburg County for five years in exchange for a lesser sentence or reduced charge for fewer convictions. This is what uh, Robert Cl Clement, a Lunenburg Commonwealth attorney, said. He says, uh, strictly voluntary and a way to keep repeat offenders out of the county. And so this is uh, an interesting way how uh because they go back into some of the background history of how like other places where they've used this sort of punishment uh so in a statement from uh, aclu says that um suspended sentences and probations usually are structured to serve the goal of rehabilitation making someone leave his or her community to escape going to jail threatens rather than serve the goal of rehabilitation moreover it does nothing to promote public safety if that's an issue because the person simply goes somewhere else where he or she isn't known Puritans did use exile and banishment to punish unwanted behavior in the earliest years of our country, but such sanctions have no place in our current time when we should be using only evidence-based practices in our criminal justice system. Great, if you're going to use evidence-based practices, then, you know, again, show me any facts or evidence that the government exists, right? If you want to be so scientific and objective about this, then please, you know, show me objectively that the city of Richmond exists. You know, when you have a, a, a parking ticket or uh, a citation that says you versus the city of Richmond, you know, all right, great. Let me face my accuser. Who is the city of Richmond? Right? There's no such thing as the city of Richmond. It's just so much there's no such thing as the United States of, of America. There's no such thing as the federal government. 
it's nothing but individual people that you've granted the authority to the false legitimacy that these strangers have that kind of power over your life. You know, that's, that's all that it exists. Psychopaths. So this is an interesting case because this is, uh, again, shows how social ostracism can be wielded in a very productive way to prevent criminality, to prevent crimes. And of course, I wouldn't sus you know, be far to suspect that uh, a lot of these uh, reasons that they're being punished for this is for victimless crimes. Um, so you know, a majority of the people who go to these rape cages in the United States of tax farms is for victimless crimes. Um, but yeah, social ostracism is a very powerful tool that we can use, especially to prevent would-be aggressors from um, from hurting any one of our members. You know, where are you going to go if um, you, you aggress against any member of our community when you're, we're united with these values on equality, for freedom, for nonviolence? You know, no one's going to house you, feed you, clothe you, invite you to their homes, invite you to their diners. You know, your at t service provider will pay you $150 to cancel their contract. You know, where are you going to go? You know, there's the woods. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm here at the National Park, a lot of area here to homestead, a lot of area here to appropriate and, and to protect, right, in a much better way that the state cannot. Um, but at the same time, uh, you'll be completely socially ostracized. You know, we'll find different ways in technology to spread this message to other communities. You know, it's, uh, we have the internet. <laughs> um, different ways that we can connect with other communities and to show a bulletin list board of all the people who have been socially ostracized and do not uh, provide uh, assistance. You know, don't uh, aid in a bet. <laughs> um, so the uh, the next, the last uh, story I'm going to bring up is OSX Mavericks released on Tuesday for a fantastic price, zero dollars. On Tuesday in San Francisco, Apple announced that one of its most anticipated new products, the latest version of OS X, will be available for free download for old and new computers alike going back to 2007. Quote, with a single step update, you can run Mavericks. Apple Senior Vice President Craig Federighi said on stage, he claimed that with Mavericks installed, a computer should get up to an hour battery life on a single charge. That's a really good improvement. Uh, the move may be may seem strange for a company with a gadget price points hundreds of dollars higher than competition, but the price of major OS X upgrades has been falling for years. OS X Mountain Lion 2012 was $19.99, but two years before that, OS X Lion was priced at $29.99. So within two years, it's dropped $10. You know, that's that's what happens in a free market. That's what happens when you have the ability to, to invest your, your capital and keep creating new products and keep creating um, new upgrades and innovations to that uh, supersede and replaces the old products. You know, the older products become even cheaper, right? But at the same time, having this capability to create more and, and, uh, and, and put that investment back into your own business to create more of these same products, you'll find uh, the free market does uh, the opposite of what happens in a state-controlled market, uh, opposite of what happens in the monopolized services from the state. Again, the quality continues to increase and the cost continues to depreciate. And in this case, they're giving away this for free. Um, you know, I, I mean, I'm an Apple user myself, never had any problems with Apple, but it's, uh, you know, compare it with uh, Microsoft. Uh, you know, Microsoft is, well, from what it, the information has come out with the NSA, are pretty much, you know, uh, <laughs> they're lackey, um, for lack of a better term. They've become their hench dog. There's some, there's some Microsoft office in one of their NSA buildings, and you know, that's going to say a lot. Um, you know, I, I haven't heard of Apple having that kind of connection. So I don't know, maybe maybe it's out there, but as far as I know, they seem kind of legit. And at the same time, when people talk about who's gonna regulate, you know, they have an interesting user face uh, rating system with the apps. Sometimes there's a lot of very interesting offensive apps that people create and put up there on, uh, on Apple for people to download and use on their phones or applications. But uh, of course, if there's enough people to look at this very negatively and see that this is a uh, pretty much putting people down, like, I've, I've heard of like anti-gay bashing apps out there too and very extreme apps that uh, run on towards you know bigotry and kind of spreading that kind of hateful message out there uh, Apple listens to that you know they don't take years to pass a you know resolution or a reform they look at that uh, immediately they take they, they, they look at the situation and assess it and say you know you know right uh, this 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 is accurate this is true we're gonna remove this app it doesn't take forever change doesn't take forever in a free market it takes forever through politics the government you know but not, not when you have the ability to remove all that you know unneeded bureaucracy and actually get to the point of actually getting things done um, so yeah user the grading system on apps is another way of how the consumers you know regulate and uh, keep and check 
from the um, wanton negative uh, hostile users out there from trying to create bad products um, and in that case apps Apple promises that the OS X upgrade will make old computers run faster and more efficiently <laughs> A feature called AppNav focuses the computer's power towards application currently in use, extending the battery life of Apple laptops. Uh, and again, that's that's what you'll find. You know, it's in the free market. We're going to find all the answers. We're going to find better ways to kind of improve. You know, um, again, this is not an advocation for utopia. It's very utopian to think the government can do all this, can solve this stuff. It's very idealistic that after thousands of years, that using violence to solve your problems is going to finally achieve the achieve the ends. It doesn't. They always have long-term consequences that you you know you kick off to the next generations to deal with. In this case, being our generation, I guess I guess my generation, um, and the generations before me. You know, they're, they're, they're coming here. You know, they're being born right now. You know, like Social Security uh, and all of the unfunded liabilities that uh, government creates. So you know, with that, well, end the state-controlled market and liberate the free market. Thank you for watching, and uh, see you guys at the Victory Party. Take good care.